Today we are finally back in mine. I'll be showing you how to create a photorealistic car paint material. We'll be looking at a few different aspects of the whole car. We will be focusing on the tires, about the metal pieces, about the windscreen and headlights. And obviously for the final we are also come looking at the car paint itself. Also feel free to check out the chapter markers below to jump into the correct section you want to look at. And if you want to follow along, this car model was provided by Wire Wheels. The link is in the description below. Check it out. They have a few more cars. Maybe you can create your own renders using your own techniques and share your renders and tag me in them. I would be curious to see what you come up with. And if you want to get the whole scene file, like how I set up the shading, the integration work, the shadow mats and everything, you can get them from my Patreon. So check that out as well. I would always appreciate new um, supporters over there. And before we get into the nitty gritty shading stuff, I want to thank Matt from Dell who actually loaned me a Dell Precision 3240 little workstation machine which I was using to render the intro sequence and I also used that to simulate my um, pyro explosions when I did the SpaceX simulations. So that little beast is packed with power, you can check the specs, it's a really nice uh, little workstation and I, if you need something and look something um, I would highly recommend that little um, workstation for your needs. It's a great thing. So without further ado, let's jump into Maya, get our hands and pen dirty and get cracking on our first material. All right, so we are back in Maya and I want to first of all give props to Ryan Harvey who helped me set up everything so I was able to get going with Maya. And as you can see, we are working on an automotive shader We'll be dissecting five different materials. I will go into detail how to set them up. I will not go to every material just because of time sake, but I will pick up the main ones, which will be the leather seating, will be the tire, the brake discs, the glass panes, and the car paint, obviously. For this, I have used render setup to do my material assignment. So it's name based. I have a reference file, which is coming in and I'm based on the naming of the file. I'm assigning materials to it. So you can see all of these collections have material overrides where I am assigning those shading engines. So that way I can be very flexible. I can go back to modeling. Things can change. Um, if they have the same naming convention, they will get the right shader assigned immediately. So that way is way more flexible if you work in a production environment. I will not go into detail how to set this up. I have a video on this. Um, I will just focus on the look dev side and doing the final pixel. As you can see here on the left, this is the in render result of um, this vehicle. This was done as a thumbnail for my previous video about Arnold 6.2. Um, check it out if you don't know what I was talking about. I was talking about the images and all that. So um, if I now remove my reference here, I'm using PureRef by the way because I get that question asked quite a lot. So this is my current setup. This is now with no shaders assigned. So we will be essentially starting from scratch and we will be starting off with the leather. You can see I have my final shader down here. But for the tutorial, I just want to recreate that so you can see how I go about it. Okay, we are now focusing on a leather. So what I find important is to see the texture of the leather. So I, I want to see this kind of surface modulation of the surface itself. Uh, before we get going though, I want to just create a simple base color to it. So something maybe uh, in this uh, um, orange beige color tones, just which is like typical seen in those automotive vehicles. You can see in the reference at the bottom, it's quite more orange than what I have now. So I'm just going to a bit more orange tone, uh, maybe desaturating it. Uh, increasing saturation a little bit, something like this, I think works uh, quite well. And then for the roughness, I just want to make it a little, a little bit um, more rough to break it up some more. And then obviously we need some kind of bump to it. So what I'm using is the cell noise and you can get that in any other DCC as well or an alligator noise. And I just want to hook that up into a AI bump node like that. It's quite straightforward. Just the luminance value, I'm just picking the red channel here, goes into my normal camera. And then in the cell noise itself, just change the mode to be alligator noise. You can visualize that in the isolate selected mode up here. So we want to change our scale. So maybe try uh, 400 in all three components. Um, it might be actually be good already. Maybe try a bit smaller. Maybe let's go to 500 to change the frequency. And then we can add two levels or maybe three to break up the base shape a little bit more. And if I go out of isolate selected mode, you can already see now we have this kind of leather texture. The bump map might be a bit too strong, so we can just reduce the overall um, intensity of this. And now you can see we have kind of a leather 
structure to it. Probably the roughness is now a bit too low. Maybe um, reduce it to make it a bit more shiny to get um, the nicer pings. I still think the amplitude of this is too high so I'm reducing it even more to just get a really subtle effect of this leather. You can now see it's nice and glossy. Maybe I went a bit too far. Um, I think that works. And now again we've got to adjust the roughness a bit more. 0.2 now and I think this works quite well for our basic leather. So if I zoom out now to go to my main camera you can now see um, we have this nice um, leather texture working. Obviously it's a bit noisy because I want to have fast iterations um, hence it's a bit noisy. Alright so now let's focus on the rubber tires. So the, these tires are always a bit tricky to get right just because of the material of itself. Um, it, is it like super glossy? Is it rough? You can see it has all these different kind of properties to it. So what I want to do first is just match kind of the material and, and then we can dive into the um, details of it. All right, so we have our basic shader. So obviously the first thing what I want to do is just uh, reduce the base color. So I want to go to a very dark value here. Um, disable color management so you work in the linear space or yeah. So just go back maybe down to 0 0.01 um, which is pretty good. Like 0.04 would be like a charcoal color roughly. So it might be maybe a little bit brighter. Um, on, and I think we already have the correct kind of color spectrum for this. And now it's just about adjusting the roughness to get roughly where you need to go. So for a basic rubber, I think um, this is already working quite okay. But now you want the extra details. So what I did um, based on the UVs I got, I, I looked at this texture here, right? And I thought, okay, why can't I just use this as my bump map? You can see there is some kind of detail and the camera perspective works quite okay. It's not perfect, but it would work, I think. Um, I created this AI image. I will just reuse these two things here, which is the base texture and the UV transform. And if I visualize this, um, you can see the texture is roughly now placed in the UV space, roughly where it's supposed to be. So what I then did, I just used a range, AI range here, um, plug that in, and then also a, a, a bump map, bump 2D, like that, hook it up, and then this goes into my normal camera of my shader. Um, and I'm hooking it all together. So now we already have um, a kind of a bump map, which is now based on our initial texture, right? So in the range itself, um, I can now contrast it a little bit if I wanted to. So I can probably lift it a bit to get a bit more detail out of this. Um, maybe something like that to only target the specky things. Obviously this is a little bit of a cheat, um, but it works, right? So whatever works for you is, is something you can apply to your techniques. And um, I think this adds lots of detail to it. I think it's maybe a bit too strong. Um, you're just gonna play it in subtle, 0.02 maybe, to just get a little bit of this breakup. And I think this kind of works already. And then what I also wanna do is add some micro noise to it to just um, break up the surface specs a little bit more. So I'm just using a regular AI noise. And again, you can use any noise for any render which works for you. And this time I use another bump and I can now, because um, the bump map have a normal input, I can then um, chain them together. So no uh, noise goes into the bump map and the out value then goes to the normal like so. This way we can chain them together. If I do um, isolate selected here, make sure you obviously change your scale to match your car tire. Um, I guess 20 is not enough. Let's go maybe 150 for the scale. This might work if we add a bit more detail using octaves. And then we can add a bit of distortion, something really subtle. And then hitting, um, uh, disabling isolate selected mode, we can now see we have definitely some breakup. We want to reduce the color too, to kind of disable the bump color. And we can just play it in very gently. I think our scale is off a little. So maybe go 250 just to make the frequency even higher. Um, this is okay. And now we got to just reduce the intensity of this. You can see I'm playing with very low values here. Um, this might actually be just enough. It's a little bit of a breakup. It's not too much. And then we can play around with the roughness again. Maybe make it a little bit more shiny. And if you want to make um, break it up overall, I think what we can also do is a, another AI noise, which is a bit larger scale with a range connected to it. And this, this way will then um, control the amount of roughness we have on certain areas. So if I hook this luminance red channel to the specular roughness, 
and I visualize the noise again and then change my scale. Maybe let's go 50. Oh, that's too small. Maybe uh, 20 or 10. It's hard to see. I have my microphone in front of my nose and then increase the detail. Yeah, this could work. And then in the range itself, we want to do smooth stepping. Um, why don't we see anything? Because I disconnected it wrongly, it needs to go to input min. And this way now we should see it. And now we can essentially add more contrast to this. So we have certain areas which are a bit more glossy. And now we just want to specify our input min, which is our minimum reflection amount, let's say 0.2. And our maximum reflection amount is maybe 0.4. And now let's see what this brings us. And now I can see we have these more glossy oily areas. And I think this works. It's maybe a bit too much on the bump side still. So maybe reduce the texture bump here. Um, this one, let's go maybe 2.5, reduce that some more. And even um, this one can even go lower. And I think now this kind of works quite all right. Uh, maybe it's a bit too glossy again. So this is obviously a little bit of a fine tuning thing. It's always um, based on what you see, what you had, like what you observe. But I think it's not too bad based on um, the reference we have in the top corner here. And I hope you actually like my UI scale. I read the previous comments and people were saying, oh, it's so small. So now I cranked up my DPI scale on my 4K monitor. So now everything is hopefully a good scale. And if you think it's good, please leave me a like below just that I know it's all working out for you. All right, so now let's work on the break disc. As you can see, the break pad is um, putting some force onto the disc, which creates a circular pattern. So we want to recreate this. So typically what I always did, I went into Photoshop, created a noise grain and a radial distortion on it to get this circular pattern. But you can do it actually all procedurally. So how you go about that is you create two noises. So one is uh, one AI noise is there for the, um, for the overall frequency of those lines. So let's just hook that up directly and now increase the frequency maybe to 500 to get like all these fine details as you can see them we have now and now you want to radially distort them so what you can use is another AI cell noise and you put that into Wally node uh, mode so the Wally mode is essentially a distance from a certain point and it creates like this gradient fall off so if I visualize that it, it will not be that interesting to look at um, let me just showcase it if I increase the frequency of this as well you can see now we get these dots all over the place. Uh, make sure your randomness is set to off so you get this perfectly grid. Maybe go a bit lower just so, so you can see what's actually happening. You can see we have from the center a distance towards the corner. And you, you get points everywhere and then there's a distance fall off. So what I want to do, I don't want to repeat the texture at all. I just want to keep it at one. And now I just want to um, plug this distance from the center to the outside into the position of that noise. So if I hook it up to the P slot here and then hook up the color to the surface shader, you can already see we get these lines. Um, the only problem now is it's a very large sphere um, and it's pasted onto the UVs, I believe. Maybe we should set this to UVs. And now you can see the pattern, right? You can see the circular pattern. The only thing what we need to do now is offset this. So we can move the position Oh, actually we cannot do it right in here. So what you would need to do is a UV um, UV transform. If I can type it, UV transform in here and do it as a pass through. So out color goes through this and then out color goes into the P again like that. And in the transform, you should now be able to offset this um, to fit it exactly how you need it to go. Right, this is still not properly done but this now is already quite fitting and you can get exactly obviously you need to spend some time to place it perfectly and again this is based on your UVs but now you can see we get this circular pattern um, just from these little procedural noises and what you can do now is connect a range as well um, to increase the contrast of this as well so you just connect these two things up like so, and then you can add more contrast to everything to get even stronger lines. And what you want to do with this, it is essentially a, a rotation map which goes into the anisotropic of your shader. So first of all, let's set the shader up to be a metallic shader. So metalness on one, we don't want any roughness, so it's like a mirror finish. 
And all I want to do now is check uh, luminance again. I, I want to plug that into specular um, rotation down below here. If you don't have it here, you can right click your node and say edit custom attribute list. And then you just click the ones you want. They will pop up in the top and then you have them as well. And then you increase anisotropy, which means it's like a surface. The surface is not reflecting in, in all directions. You won't see anything if you don't have any roughness. So if you increase the roughness, you can now already see we get this pattern, like as if something is brushed. And this essentially is all I want to do. And based on your looking angle, you can see the effect is quite different based on um, what you're looking at. If I increase now my specular samples to three, you can now see we have a better representation. And again, this is based on um, your roughness. So you would also need to um, play around with that a little bit more. Uh, maybe go to 0.15 to break it up a bit. And you can now see we get this nice circular lines and break up on the brake pad. Again, you can apply heat distortion to it and you would do that using a thin film. So you go to thin film here. Um, and increase that thickness. You can see already it's being colorized a little bit. It's very subtle, um, but you can see the effect of that heat distortion on it. Um, it's a bit now bluish. Uh, it, it again depends a bit what you want to do. Um, the brake pad here is very dark. So what I want to do here is just reduce the base color to get a darker color like this. And you can now see it's getting nice and red and hot. This is based on the thickness can change this um, until you you get the right color you want. And you can also put in a thickness noise map so you get this uh, better kind of representation. And this essentially is uh, what I want to do with the brake pad. And you can now see it's like greenish and then at sometimes it's a bit red based on the viewing angle. So this is just because of the thin film interference effect. All right, so now let's focus on the main windshield and the side windows. You can see there is some kind of uh, bluish teal tint to it. And you see there's also in the top, there's like a little darker gradient, which probably is there for sun blocking. And you get like this bumpy pattern on the side windows as well. So these are the things I, I'm looking at when I look at references. And I want to rep kind of replicate this effect. So a little bit of a bump a little bit of a gradient here and then like a bluish tealish tint to the glass itself. So right now looking through the main here, which is my uh, main camera, this is what we get. And we have a basic standard surface shader applied. So obviously the first thing what I do, I disable roughness and I increase the transmission to get clear windows like that. Right now we don't have any colorization, we have nothing to it. So what I want to do, I want to first of all change the depth here. So the depth is a slider which controls um, or tells the render how thick the glass is and based on this it will absorb more or less color. So if I pick this blue color you can now see um, it's a little bit bluish but if you reduce the depth uh, the more you reduce the depth, the more blue it will get. And this is a physical phenomenon, right? If you look at the ocean where the shallow water, it's kind of clear, but then as it gets deeper, it's really dark and rich and blue. This is kind of the same effect. So now we just need to fine tune or dial in this color. I think um, it's a bit greenish. I think this is actually a pretty good representation. Uh, maybe check a little bit greener side. Maybe that is okay. And then obviously it's just about um, controlling the depth here. So if I increase that, you see less of that blue. If I decrease it, we see more of the blue. So I want to control this parameter with a ramp to create this sun blocking effect. So all I got to do now is create a ramp. Um, I always use the RGB one just because it has a nice uh, gradient like this, but the float one will work just as well. So if I hook this up now to my surface like this, you can see we have already this gradient. If I flip these two slots, you can see we have the gradient from top to bottom. Again, this is dependent on the UVs, so make sure you have good UVs. Okay, and then you kind of have this sun blocking effect. You can see it's a little bit bent, but um, again, based on the UVs, this works for you or not. So it's always good to um, adjust things based on your needs. So this is now essentially my mask. So what do I want to do with this? I want to control this depth value with that. So it's now on 1.7. So how would we do this? So essentially, I'm a bit lazy. I like to do it with a color correct node. 
Um, there are tons of ways of doing this. I'm just using this way. You can use a multiply, you can do all sorts of things, but I think this one gives me the most flexibility. So a value of 1.7, I'm just copying this, going into the color correct, go to the color slot here um, and paste this number in here. So 1.7 is my input. And then the mask is essentially the red channel of our ramp, which goes into mask. And then the red channel of the color correct goes into the transmission depth here. Again, if you don't have it, I showed you the trick earlier, make sure to enable this. And now if I look at the color correct node, uh, let's hook this up in the shader. If I look through this uh, in a selected mode, this is my color. Um, I'm not sure why it is blue. Um, <laughs> we probably don't want any saturation, so we can just kill the saturation on this. There we go. And now if I change my multiply, you can see now, oh, we have white in the top and dark at the bottom, right? Um, and we probably want to flip this. So again, um, we can now invert the ramp again. This was just for visualization. So now the top one is essentially white. And if I now visualize the result, you can see now we have this darker top part. And again, if it's now too, too strong, you can change the multiply in here and you can now see I have control over how strong I want this to show up in here. I think we're a bit too saturated on our greens. So all I got to do now is go to my input here and increase this number maybe to two. And now it's not as strong. If you go to three, it's less, even less blue. I think even maybe a value of 2.5 uh, is quite good. You see some kind of teal here and then a stronger one at the top. I think overall we are till, uh, still too blue. So I'm just changing my color wheel to be a bit more on the green side. Um, I think this is maybe now too green but you can see how easy it is to adjust it. All right, so next up, let's try to focus on these little dents here, right? And as I think this pattern, which I'm looking at here, looks almost like a grid. So my first thought is let's just try a noise. So let's go to create an AI cell noise. Um, and you can always visualize it by plugging it directly in here and to the surface shader or you can do connect it to your shader and do isolate selected this is just uh, a way i like to work so let's switch this to wally -E, switch the disable randomness and maybe increase i'm not sure let's check uvs and increase the scale maybe to 50. all right that's a bit small uh, let's go 20 oops amplitude 1 20 20 20. Yeah, this kind of works. And now you can also, I'm looking just on a, on the side windows because we don't want that in the front. And then I just check the randomness just to break it up a little bit, something like this. And this will go into the bump map essentially. So now how do we control the windows, right? So a trick is you're using AI user data. And um, as you can see, I already have this uh, kind of a sun blocker um, attribute and also the window mask. So all you got to do is make sure you are in the shape of your object. You go to attributes, add attribute. And for my, it's important to add M to a constant. And then you can say any name in here. Um, and depending on your type, you can read that into your shader. So I, I created those attributes as a float and I bring them in using user data um, float like that. Actually, um, let's check quick. Um, window mask. I actually bring it in as an integer. So this is a side window mask. I stored this as an integer. So I need to read it in as an integer. So this is a default value of zero. So if it does not find this on your shape, it will default to zero. But if it finds it, like you find it on this window, it's a one, you know, it's kind of enabled, right? So everything is zero. Um, so what I can do, I can potentially try to use this um, as a cell noise, as a multiplier. So let's try to use um, creating an, just an AI multiply node. Uh, let's just type mult. All right, so what I wanna try here is use the color here and multiply it with this user data. And because if it does not find a value, it's zero. And if it finds a value, it's one. So on here, it should be retained and on the side, it should go black. I'm not sure if you can connect ins to floats. Okay, you can, it's good. So now you can see only the other windows are affected. 
um, and the rest stays because you multiply it with a value of one, which is on the on the shapes. Right, so now if I use this now as a bump map, um, you will see that only the side windows will get these this bulginess. I hope. Let's try AI bump 2D and let's hook this map up to the normal camera and then we need to connect the shader. Okay, and you can see now we have this nice breakup on the rear wind on the side windows, but not on the on the front. Obviously, again, way too strong. So reduce the amplitude to really low. You can now see we get some kind of breakup here. Again, I think it's not as much in the bump map. It's more in the roughness of the windscreen. So I want to have this probably really low. I don't even know if I want this because you don't see the surface is being broken up as much as we can see here. So instead of using it as a bump, let's use it as a um, roughness. So I'm just creating a range like that. And then I'm hooking up the color from the multiply to my range. And then this one goes into the specular roughness of the window. We have this AI range connected in between. And if I disable the bump map here for now, and I just focus on this small area. Um, and if I now crank up, you can already see there's some roughness on the window. So I can essentially just um, play around with those values here. It will be a bit of a blind test now, but you can see if I play around with those values, you can see we get this little bit of a break up here. And the front window should be unaffected because this value is essentially black. And we just am um, playing with these numbers here on the side to create some kind of roughness here on, on the side windows. You can see if I go really low, um, this is because our amplitude was so low. If I keep this back at one, we have now a wider control. Let's just disconnect the bump map. But now if I play around this, you can now see, oh, we actually do something. Uh, we, do, we do see these patterns. And this is essentially what I wanted to create. Um, I think um, we need to flip the colors of the cell noise. So we can use an AI complement to just invert the colors. It's like a reverse or an invert or whatever. So complement, and then this one goes back to the input. And now I need to adjust my range, I guess. So uh, it's a one and zero because I have no, nothing connected. So let's make sure you connect something. And now we are back to this. Okay, so now um, we can work around with the range again. So I clamp this, now you can see we get these broken up dots. And this is, is that exact, exactly what I wanted to create. And now you can just uh, fine tune them to have them in there just a very, very small amount. Um, and now you can see we kind of get the same kind of look which you have on the side window. Obviously, again, we are too strong. So uh, we reduce this uh, out max to be very subtle, maybe 0.15. And now you can see we have a little bit of this breakup. And uh, again, if I increase my render settings, maybe transmission and specular a bit higher. Uh, if we let this cook for a bit, you can now see we have these nice um, smudges, which you can see there as well. It's not in the front because we blocked it out, but it's definitely on the side windows. All right, so now let's jump into the headlights. So as you can see in my reference here, they have this nice colorization here. So this is again like a thin film interference. It's like a plastic which uh, with like an oilophobic coating or something like that. So we want to replicate that as well. So um, in the glass uh, material, all I want to do now is first obviously make it uh, translucent. Um, if you go to the render, um, the shader settings, make sure you don't have any roughness, make sure you have transmission on. So now you can already see through the glass, which is nice. And now we want to create this kind of uh, thin film interference, right? So um, essentially all you have to do is control um, the thickness of it, right? So in, in the thin film, if you enable this and play around with the IOR, you can now see we get this kind of color tint already. Um, right now, this is um, the same on every angle, but if you look from the front, you don't want to really see the effect. So there's a nice node called uh, facing ratio. Uh, you can use Maya sample node, I think as well, or if you're on a different render, it's, I think it's also most of the time called facing ratio. And what you want to do with this um, is probably dial in the, um, the thickness. So a thickness of zero is essentially t disabling the effect. So um, let's look how the facing ratio will work if I connect a AR range. Actually, we probably don't need the range because it has a built-in range. 
Um, but looking at this now, you can see looking from the front, it's like this. From the side, you can see it's it's changing essentially its color based on the viewing angle. So what I want to do, I want it to be zero, like black when I look at it from the front. So we should invert this, I think, and then play around with the bias. And also with the gain, I, I don't really know the values by heart, so I'm just sliding to see exactly what I want to see. Um, I think something like this is pretty much what I like to see. So now on the front, this will not have this thin film effect, but then on the side, this will not have it. And then again, um, it will be there in the front. So it's probably a bit too strong what I have right now. We do want to fade it off a little. And you can, can click control on your parameters, control and click and drag on the number to have like a built-in slider essentially. So from the top, it's black. And then if you look from the side, you can see the effect. Um, I want to also connect this with a range and this will go into, um, I'll just deal with the red channel for now. So I'm just using the red component of this. And this will go into the um, thin film thickness like that. If I now again uh, visualize the shader, you can now hopefully see um, thickness. Probably it's uh, um, disabled now too much. Um, so we need to have a thickness of 1000, right? So right now our range is between zero and one. Um, so what I want to do here, make sure that we have a really high range. Let's try 2000. And the value now is between zero from the front and then from the side, essentially it's 2000. And you can see you get this kind of banding effect. And you can play with this number if you want a different thickness. And you can also play around um, with the IOR of the material itself to create a more distinct um, color. Uh, what you also can do is cr connect a bump map to all of this to break it up even further. So, um, so what I always like to do is create an AI noise like this. And um, if I visualize this quick and drop it into the surface shader and then make sure I um, increase my scale maybe to 25. And now see we have a nice pattern and I want to use that as a bump like this. And then the red channel goes to the bump slot. Oh, out goes to normal camera. And now I'll visualize the shader. You can now see we have a nice breakup. Maybe the size is too small. Maybe try 10. Yeah, and you can now see we have like a softer bendiness to it. And this is exactly what I want to do. You don't want perfect mirror-like reflections. You always want some kind of um, distortion to it. And now you can already see um, from the front, it's a bit much. So reduce, reduce the bump a little um, just to create this kind of um, broken up shape. You can see the, the, um, the geo behind it is not perfectly round anymore. It's all broken up and you can clearly see this here in the ref uh, reference to these lines are all messed up. There's no perfect circle. It's all a bit dented. Right now we are at stage two on the monthly CG lounge challenge. The first one was a modeling challenge where um, members had to replicate a certain asset. The winner of that asset was provided to the surfacing look dev team. So now everyone can join and start look devving um, the Walkman asset and the winner of that will then provide that shading and asset to the next department which will be rendering and lighting and the winner of that will win the whole thing. So that's the first challenge we are starting and we are trying to make it more exciting. We want to try to get more people on this and at some point we want to get sponsorships. So I would really appreciate it if you would like to join, um, if you're good at modeling, if you want to do um, look dev stuff or if you want to do lighting, everything will be um, really appreciated if you want to join, share your work, share with the community and get better. All right, so the moment you have all been waiting for is how do you do the car paint? So before I always use the standard surface shader, but now they have a nice AI car paint shader. It has already quite a few nice little things built in. And again, um, this is now a material which is based on what kind of car you have. Um, I think most of the vehicles out there don't have a metallic coating because it's quite expensive to um, to do that because it's a several layer based coating with a base color, with a spec color, uh, with a flake um, layer. So it's all broken up and then obviously you have your coat on top. So it's four or five different layers. Typically cars have a base and a coat, that's it. It's cheap to do and that's what you see most of the time out there. So by just connecting this material, you get like a red, car 
um, and this is probably um, the most basic setup you have. So this vehicle here is obviously a metallic car paint just because I can see how the light is being reflected here. You can see there's this strong sheen where the light is hitting the surface. It's pretty dark all over but then when there's light it's kind of blue and metallic. You can even see the flakes. Um, I do have uh, close-ups like this where you can clearly see it's a metallic car and you can see all the detail. So you can see the surface is not actually flat. You can see all the bumpiness. You can see there's this small noise everywhere which breaks up the car paint. Typically when I see car renders, everything is perfectly flat and straight and that's just not how it is. That's why it's easy to tell if it's a CG render or not. Just look at the reflections. Are they perfectly straight or are they um, broken up? So you can even see in here, this is my CG render here, like this line here is not straight, there's actually like a waviness to it and even here, everything um, is broken up and this is what makes things look more real than um, others, right? Okay, so now let's first try to get the color and the metallicness uh, to work. So I try to replicate this lighting setup um, as close as I could in terms to get what I need to um, see. So I had the strong light here and I had some lights on the bonnet like that. And then this way I was able to kind of nail the shader quite well. So let's just dive into, into this. So how this works, these, these are stacked, right? So base is at the bottom, specter goes on top, flakes goes on top, coat goes on top. So whenever, if you have a full spec weight, you will not see much of the base itself. So what I always first do, I just kill everything, like no color. Uh, we don't have density, so flex are off on default. We don't want any code. And now we just are dealing with the first component. And this is a good way to work. It's very, very modular and you can really um, understand how things work if you go one by one. So um, I just want some kind of blue base. So let's go one here and we can also pick a color um, like that. It's obviously not the same. It's like in the ballpark. So I always then adjust it. All right, so now let's just um, dial in this base color a little bit. So we probably want it to be a bit darker, not too dark though. We want some kind of bluish in it. And then we just need to change. It's a bit more purple, blue, I guess, something like this. This would be quite good for my base. You can have a um, Lambertian or um, I think it's um, Oranea Lin on one. So it's different kind of diffuse modes. Um, I like this one, it just gives a bit more shape can see here. So if I bring in the specular weight, you can now see this is actually a coating above the base layer, right? It's not the coat itself, the coat is at the bottom. So base has a spec color as well. And this is kind of uh, ties in with the flakes. So specular and flakes are pretty much go hand in hand. So if I bring up the density here, you can now see we have flakes. If I disable the specular, we don't have anything. So this is now how you need to control it. So, and you can see if I add in full density flakes, you don't see the base layer anymore. So if I reduce the density of the flakes, you can now see the base layer is poking through again. You can see it's a little bit lighter in blue tones. And this is essentially how you dial it in. So do you have full flakes all over the place? Pretty much, but I think it's spread out a little. You can see um, we, we it seems like we do have um, some kind of um, negative space or clear space which does not have um, those flakes, right? So it's a bit of a, a thing where you need to dial it in. So um, I do have a different camera, which I think is the um, front wheel shape, which is this one, where we are pretty close um, by the vehicle. I thought I'd had a reference. Yeah, this one actually is my reference, um, which is this one here. And we can then kind of dial in the size of those flakes. And so let's do that. So uh, let's go to car paint and we do have the uh, scale It's 0.01. It's already um, quite small. What, what you can do, you can type in another 01 here and you get smaller flakes. It will not be represented in the UI, but it is actually using that number internally. So you can see now we have very fine, small flakes. And again, based on density, you see through the base color. So um, how do we get this nice metallic blue? So you, you probably change the color of the flakes, right? So if I change it to be a blue kind of color of the flakes, you can now see already it looks very metallic just by changing these two things. And again, we need to maybe go in a bit more um, purple color and maybe reduce the values. And now we, we already see we are getting closer to um, like a metallic feel to it. 
Based on the roughness, you can say how reflective these flakes essentially are. So let's go back to our main camera and just see um, what we are getting. I just adjusted my render settings a little bit so we see a bit less noise. You can now see we already have a nice kind of um, blue color coming through. It's, it's, it's not too bad. So uh, we can now play around with this, uh, with these other, other parameters here. Like the roughness essentially is how reflective it is. And then you can play around with the density to see more of the base color or you want fully metallic and this is now how that would look like, right? So you got to tune it in until you kind of get the look you want the car to be. And then you have these uh, flip-flop colors. This is essentially a facing ratio. So whatever is now close to the camera is essentially getting this red or what is away will get a different color. So what you can do now is create a RAM color for this uh, AI RAM RGB and hook that up into um, this flip-flop thing like that. And if I visualize this now, you can see this is what we get and you can change this to you. Um, and then it's essentially like a ramp which is affecting um, how this is um, driving the flip-flop color. So you can obviously change the colors here to be um, a strong red or something. And then you should have a different color here on the side, maybe um, a purple or whatever. And if you change the modes, you can see in the car paint now, based on the angle, if I go back to my perspective camera, um, you, get, you can see it's, it's a different color all over. So based on how you look at it, you get a kind of different response to it. And this is essentially how you would dial it in. So uh, what we can try here um, is have this color to be a lighter blue, uh, maybe something like this. You can now see we get this nice blue sheen. And then on the side, we can have it a bit darker blue. Maybe go to the same hue, just reduce it a little bit, maybe change the saturation or something. And right now we don't have any coding. So that's why it looks a bit bizarre. Um, so once you have dialed that in, let's go to the code and bring up the, um, the weight of this. And now you can see now, we can see it's all over reflective now. And it's, it's a lot closer to what you would expect it to be. And again, now, once you have everything in place, you can then again, start to dial in all your parameters. So you can now, I don't know, play around with the roughness of the flakes, maybe 0.2. Um, if, it's, if you find them a bit small, you can obviously um, bring back the numbers so they go a bit bigger. So it's a bit more obvious, but I think it's just too large. So maybe try 0.025. And then you have a bit smaller flakes like this. Um, you can try to play around with the randomization. So if you don't have it it's that strong, they are only being uh, very visible close to light surfaces like this. And again, you always should compare it to your reference because I can't really give you a tutorial on how to do any car because all cars are slightly different, right? And a major point though, what I want to make is you got to break up your surfaces. So that's what I was telling in the beginning. You got to break it up like this. So it's not just one uniform kind of material. And what I want to do, I want to create a layer um, float like this. You can see it has tons of different um, slots here. And I want to connect this to a bump map. So I use an AI bump 2D like that. And if I hook up the out value to my bump map, and hook that into my normal camera. Um, I think that's the correct, it might need to go into the, let me check, did I connect it to the, um, it needs to go to the code normal actually. So not car paint normal camera, but it needs to go to the code normal like that. So out normal from the bump goes into the code normal like that, all right? So right now, still nothing will really happen because we don't have anything in here. Uh, but let's say I create an AI noise pattern like that and I hook that up into my input one. Like so, and I visualize the, no the noise. Um, what I can do now is obviously just change the scale. So the first thing what I want to do is add like a really big broad noise on top of this. So maybe try a value of uh, three. Um, and if I visualize the shader now, um, you should see that the surface is now being kind of broken up. I hope, let's see. So it's, I, I connected this wrongly, so I'm connecting normal. I need to go out value to code normal. And now you can see everything is nice and broken up. And this is essentially what I wanna do. I wanna keep for now the bump 
height on one and I just want to drive the height on my colors here. So if this is on zero, you really don't have any height. And you can see now if I really gently bring in some color, you can see how everything gets distorted, right? And that's what I mean by you need to break things up. So I'm really slowly increasing the height of this um, to break up the surface, right? So you can see um, you, ju you don't want to have it straight. So I'm just doing like this really broad um, breakup all over the place. And if I look through my perspective camera here, um, you can see that the highlights are like jumping and that's exactly what I want to achieve. You do want to break it up. And now, obviously now comes the next thing where we connect them. Um, the, the problem now, if you look at this, it looks pretty black, the map. So you can either um, crank up the exposure or you can crank up this number here, but then you need to reduce your bump map. So it's it's a little bit of how you want to work. So we can just have a very gentle bump map as well. It, it doesn't really matter. All right, so now let's create a fire noise. So I'm shifting this noise and I'm connecting this now to my um, input number two. And I make sure that input number two is enabled. And if I now, um, let's say I want to go a bit small, let's go 25 and noise scale. And if I visualize this, this is now the pattern size and the result is right now off. So I now I can mix it in, right? You can see now, oh, I'm bringing in this other noise on top of the existing one. And you can see now we have a even finer breakup. So um, I can now obviously reduce the intensity here or in the, in, the, in the layer two mix, I can reduce the weight in here, right? So now um, 0.09 is probably way too much. So 0.01, um, you can now see it's uh, broken up already. And this is essentially how I set it up, right? So you can do another one. So shift D this again, and then we go to um, the next slot. So show all, um, where is it? Show all attributes. And then I want to go here and connect input number three. And this time let's go, um, let's say 80 for the scale, right? So in here now we can say enable layer 80, enable the mix, and now you can see we have this even finer noise, right? And this is essentially how you do it. So you then maybe reduce it even more. Um, obviously it's not so strong as I have it here, so we definitely want to dial it back down. And we also want to dial back down the other one. And then we want probably have one more, one last one, which is a super fine, which is this one here. Um, and then we hook that up into um, input number four, make the size maybe 200, like that. And then we en enable layer four and enable the mix. And now we can see we have the super fine noise, maybe do um, a very small um, mix here. Can now see we have this breakup. So again, it's a bit strong. So you gotta change it, adjust it and get it to work for your case. Um, and this is essentially how I set it up for my main shader. So if I connect that now um, to my render, you will see it's pretty close to what we had as well. Obviously the blue tones are a bit different. I played around a bit more with the colors of the car paint, but essentially this is what it is. And if you want the exact shader, you gotta go to, through my Patreon to download the source files and get it the, through there. What I also did, um, I played around with some kind of noise. I'll just show you what I did. Um, I created some occlusion-based um, mapping using a range, and then I also used curvature as well to create a different mask. I connected these to a composite to get like a broader mask texture. And then I was using this um, to blend in this kind of um, dust shader, like which is this one on top of my final render. So I have a very subtle dust effect on top of everything, which just helps to um, showcase a little bit of a breakup as well. And as a bonus for this, I want to show you how I actually did the final render. So I'm using a shadow mat um, and apply this on a flat plane, which is just below my car, right? So if I hook this up to my surface shader, uh, you can see now we do have the shadow mat applied. If I check the alpha, you can see we do have the shadow and everything going. So um, how do I get this um, this working in render like that? There's a few little tricks which um, I will show you right now. So first of all, I'm using my 
HDRI, which I'm using to light everything. And I use that as a image in my projection. So I created a projection node with a place 3 detection node and made sure the type is on um, spherical. And then if I hook this up to my background color for the shadow mat, you can see there is like a scene background or you can actually specify a background color. You can drop that in here and then you can already see that you get some kind of um, projected texture in here. And you can play around with the place to denote, to place it, move it, offset it, to get it exactly where you want it to be. And then you can also apply a color correct node because I think it's a bit too dull and I don't want to change the HDI because this will change my lighting. So I'm hooking up a color correct node um, in between the background color and the projection. Uh, hit three to show connected nodes. And then in here we can increase exposure and you can see it will actually reflect on the vehicle as well. So everything gets nicely projected onto the car. So if I would change this to green, the reflection will be green as well, which is exactly what you want. Um, so what else can we do? So um, what I always like to do is apply some kind of occlusion on top of this. This just helps you to ground your assets to your shadow mats. So I'm just using an AI ambient occlusion node. It's any other occlusion node which you'll find in your render. And in this case, now I want to create a multiply because I want to multiply this result, a black and white result, on top of the color correct node to get this kind of occlusion. So if I hook this up, everything nicely together, you can now already see we got something happening in the foreground on the, on the front vehicle, on the front wheel is what I meant to say. So you can see we have the occlusion. Uh, you can dial that in using the distance. You can play around with the spread angles to make it a bit more aggressive, um, something like that. And if you visualize the result now, you can see um, that we have an occlusion on top of this. So if I um, not have it, you can see it's kind of, um, it's there, it's just the HDRI shadow, but you can also apply occlusion to get a nicer fall of around your shadows. And to get this film look, which I have, I used Arnold's new feature called Imagers. They have a few ones in here, so um, I'll be just showing you, let me just hide the outliner and probably hide the view panes too. And bring up the, um, the Imager panel here. I just want to stop the render and I just want to add a few ones. Um, so one is uh, color correct and also um, on top of that I also want to add a lens effects which helps me to get the vignetting. And with those two um, added I can now just start the render again, hit play. Oh, I, I'm not sure if we just need to update the whole thing. Uh, this should give us um, the um, option to play around. So what I always like to do, I just want to lift the blacks because it's sometimes in CG, CG it's always just too too black, the um, the black level. So I'm just offsetting them. You can see just by doing this a uh, very subtle amount, um, you get a nicer look just by doing that. Obviously you don't want to do it too much. You want to play it subtle. You can also just render a region first um, to dial it in a little bit faster. So now we can go back to shadows. You can double click to get this dialog and then you can play around until you um, get exactly the black level lift. I think um, maybe 0.15 is pretty good. And then next up, what I always like to do is play around with vignetting. It always gives, a, gives you a nice lens effect. So if I increase vignetting, you should now see um, you get this uh, fading around the edges and you can obviously play it in as you need it. Um, I think this always adds a nice little touch. And then uh, last but not least, what I always do is the bloom. You can see it in the render at the bottom too. So I'm just waiting for this to uh, resolve. And then you can play around with the strength and you can already see by just adding a little bit of this, you get the strong bloom effect. You can change the radius, how far it essentially spreads. And then you can play around with the intensity. Um, you can make it a little bit warmer if you want to. Uh, maybe reflecting kind of the sun orange colors. And uh, there you have it. You can play around with the threshold to affect more regions. And if I now render this, you should be have a nice result. But on top of all of this, you can apply a denoising um, imager, which will actually denoise your image on the go. It takes a bit of time. Um, that's why I always do this step last. 
And once uh, the render is completed, the denoiser kicks in, and now you can already see it's a bit cleaner. You can increase the variance maybe to 0.6. It, it, sometimes it's a bit too heavy, and you got to be careful that you don't get rid of all your little flakes, but it's still working, um, even with our low resolution. So let me just render this image now, and then we'll see. All right, so now with all the effects applied, the denoising applied, this is um, the result. And it's quite close to what I actually rendered in, uh, beforehand. So um, yeah, so I love how the light is blooming off on the high um, intensity areas. You can see the car paint is nicely broken up. It's not super smooth everywhere. And this is just the way how I like to do my renders. Always break up your shapes, always break up the roughness. All right, with those techniques you learned now, you should be able to create really good looking shaders and just use my techniques, break it up. That's the most important thing to break up your surfaces. You don't want this physically straight uh, reflections because that is not what's happening in real life. So make sure to break up your specularities, always add bob maps, break it up and obviously do some nice placement, make sure the integration work is well done and then I think you get a pretty good render. So if you have a good render and you want some feedback, feel free to join the Discord community and I will critique your work or we'll also check out my Patreon if you want a one-to-one -one mentorship. So thanks everyone for watching this video today and I will see you in the next one.